hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Antonio Puertas, as Paulo said. I work uh, for, the Euro for the European Commission. Um, sorry, I work in the European Commission. I work in the GRC, which is the Joint Research Center. The Joint Research Center is, uh, is an institution that uh, gives uh, science support to the Commission for policy making. Today my talk uh, will be uh, about something that is called um, European Reference Laboratories for Genetically Modified Food and Feed and the mm, utilization of next flow to replace the pipelines that, that we are using now. Um, before in, to talk about the next flow, I have to give you a little bit of context in order you understand why, we're, why we are doing uh, why, we are, why we are hosting uh, an European reference laboratory for genetically modified food and feed. So, um, the Joint Research Center, the mission is provide independent advice, independent evidence for the whole policy cycle of the Commission. We are, uh, we are not an, ag an agency of the European Commission, we are European Commission and uh, Scientists from the whole uh, um, member states work uh, in the GRC. We have almost 83% of the people working in the GRC, in the GRC has an, an, a PhD. Um, the GRC is quite big. Uh, we are more than 3,000 people, and it's spread about, along five member states. Uh, the biggest site is the place where, where I work, is in the north of Italy. Uh, and it hosts uh, 2,000, more than 2,000 people. Um, but we have uh, um, other institutes, smaller than 300 and 400 people, in, for example, in Germany, in, Ispra, in Netherlands, in Seville. And also we have um, an institute in Gale. Um, the main site is in Ispra, where I'm working, but the headquarters are in Brussels. So, um, one of the things that we are doing is, there are many things said about the policy and the competence and management, but one of the things that we are trying to address in the last period is the last one, which is, the information deluge, the multidisciplinarity, and one of the things that is important are the reproducibility, because this is one of the problems that we have in science. So, um, in this slide, there are many numbers, and I don't want to uh, fed you with this stuff. One of the things that is important, important for me is that 30% of the activities are in policy preparation and 70 is in policy implementation. This is why we have an uh, operational role in, the, uh, in running the um, European reference laboratories because when companies want to introduce genetically modified um, plants in Europe, we, have, we are part of the authorization mechanism and you will see in a minute. So, um, the European Reference uh, Laboratory for Food and Feed uh, responds to, to an, a clear mandate. It's, it's an, a mandate that is, uh, this is, is a mandate that is given for, from the European Commission that is supporting the GMO authorization project, process. So, we have to validate the method of the detection methods that the companies supply in order to be able to, if they fill up the requirements of the fee that they, they want to sell. So, um, till um, this year, I think uh, also for the next year, because we are still trying to, to change the pipeline and to introduce the next flow, we will use in this uh, tool that we call is MedScan. MedScan is a method scanning. So, and it basically it's a pipeline. It's a pipeline that has been written um, in Bash 
And what is ba basically doing um, is uh, after the submission in, in, in a website, uh, we, ha we are using Condor, HT Condor, maybe someone of you knows that, um, as a backbone of, for the, um, the processing. And then we produce a report that we can see in the, um, in the website. But all these tools or all this data uh, is, are internal, nothing of this data can be published or can be um, shown because what we are dealing we are dealing with um, data that came from private companies so we cannot show this so and then we some years ago two three years ago we or four years ago we met paolo in in switzerland in lugano and and after that i moved to the group of bioinformatics and the, the year after and then we start to think about, uh, okay, uh, at that time we were working with Condor, and I want to say something that Condor is, we are using Condor for this tool, but Condor is at the backbone of the GRC for what is uh, one of the main business that we are doing in, in, the, in the Joint Research Center, and this, that is uh, satellite images process, imaging processing. Because we are uh, monitoring and giving also policy support for what is called the crops in the in whole Europe, and also for land monitoring, and in Condor is the the scheduler that we are using for this kind of uh, activities. Because what we are talking today is very very and a small and a tiny part of what the GRC is doing. So back to our business, uh, we are using Condor, uh, and the Condor the process is split in three parts. The Amplicon is the generation of the methods sequence then we we produce a blast and then we we run an, an ipcr uh, and then we show the report and to understand if it this is compliant or not but the main thing that is we are running on condor and we are running on our hardware we are running on software versioning we have system administration problems this is prone to human errors because any time that you program and you touch something is prone and we, we, we take time because any time that we change the scheduler or we change something in the cluster we have to test and this is take time for us so this is the problem that we had and then we came to we start to think of next flow so next flow uh, every one of us knows the power of this tool and for us, uh, the process will be also divided in three for the moment. Maybe we will change in the future, I don't know. The test that we are doing is, is in this way. And we have many advantages. Some of them is that it's independent of the hardware. This is, this is for us is very, very important because the laboratories, for the moment, um, we are running the, um, the reference laboratory for genetically modified feed and food. But these activities will be moved a little bit, uh, it will be moved, will be migrate in the future to EFSA. So this is activity will be, so we need to provide these kind of tools in order to be implemented on this kind of agencies or other um, institution. So next flow is independent of hardware. We don't have problem of uh, software versioning because once we have the docker produced with the version that we have it will be for everyone uh, we don't have system administration we are not prone uh, less prone to errors and we have less and less activities on the on the level of the system so this is why we are now testing the the product and we are happy we have some issues but we solved uh, yesterday many thanks for the hackathon um, and this is more or less what we, I want to, to tell you. I, I have a couple of slides that talk about the system, but this is not important. The important thing is this, because and this is more reflect um, a vision a little bit wider of uh, what could be next flow, or maybe the way we are thinking next flow, because if the test are I continue to, to, to work in and we, we go in this in the right direction. Maybe we can think in this kind of question that 
that you will see, that I will try to explain. And this year we host a uh, workshop in um, antimicrobial resistance in the GRC. And then we produce a report with the people that, that was working, and we have many questions about the antimicrobial resistance. But one of so three of them, this is not only the three questions that the report produced, but three of them were, were how to generate or distribute pipelines. And this came from the AMR workshop. How to demonstrate accuracy and evaluate and also the people who came to the to the to the workshop ask a question who oh, who will be the institution or who is the um, how can i say it will be the academia it will be the member state who will be entitled to do this in, in the case of antimicrobial resistance for example um other questions came from uh, some reports that they pro we produced uh, in 2016, and it, they talk about regulatory bioinformatics. Maybe regulatory bioinformatics is something that you know, because if you work on this area, maybe you know this paper. So, and the questions are almost the same. I mean, uh, in NGS, uh, is how how we can ensure accuracy and quality of the information. This is for the NGS. But in the computational toxicology, toxicology is also very big in the, in, the, in the things that we are doing as a policy support, is how, we can, how can we validate these packages? So how can we say, OK, this is the pipeline, this is the version, this is one, uh, another question, and the problem of standardization and uh, computational methods. So this is, the, all these are open questions. So maybe we were discussing for some one of you um, about this in the, yesterday and uh, this morning. And maybe you can also reflect and maybe in the next hackathon, or maybe we can exchange emails or, or talk about this. So this is all the, the things that I want to say. And thank you very much for the attention. And if you have question, or you can address me by email, or you can ask me. Thank you.